In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Atari 2600 games up and running in the PS2 version of RetroArch. I'm quite fond of the Atari 2600. It was the very first system that I ever played games on with things like Pac-Man, Asteroids, Missile Command, and I just have a lot of love for the system and its history in the video game market. The Atari 2600 has been emulatable for a very long time, and thanks to its very low system requirements, is another system that runs absolutely beautifully on a PS2. So today I'm going to show you how to get that up and running in the PS2 version of RetroArch, so let's dive in. Alright, so to add Atari 2600 games to our RetroArch install, we need to take our USB stick out of our PS2 and put it back into our computer. Then we just need to get our USB drive opened if it doesn't pop up automatically. Next, we're going to need Atari 2600 games. Now, you could dump these from your own physical Atari carts if you happen to have any on hand. You could rip them from a number of Atari classic compilations that have come out over the years, or even a couple of those at-game flashback things. Or, you know, you could just resort to the shady parts of the net. Your choice! But as always, no download links or anything like that will be given out. So please just don't ask, the requests will be deleted and ignored, so just stop. But anyways, once we have sourced Atari 2600 games, we just need to add them to our USB drive. Now on my USB drive, since this is a continuation of previous tutorials, I have created a folder named RetroArch ROMs, and that's where I'm putting all the games that I use for RetroArch. So I'm going to open that up and drag my Atari 2600 games inside. Now, you don't need to put them in a folder that's named RetroArch ROMs. You can put them wherever you want on this USB drive. It doesn't really matter. I just like to have all of my stuff consolidated into single folders for their purposes. But once you get those copied over, we can close out of everything on the computer and move the drive back over to our PS2 and launch into RetroArch. Now, just as a quick reminder, this is a continuation of my original PS2 RetroArch install video, so if you haven't gotten RetroArch installed yet, please refer back to that video for how to do so, as well as making a nice RetroArch launcher here for your browser. But anyways, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch. You could do so using Launch Elf if you didn't make a shortcut, or use the shortcut. And once RetroArch has booted up, we are ready to begin loading up Atari 2600 games. And one of the methods we can use to do so is to go down to Load Content, scroll down to the Mass option here, this is our USB drive, go to the directory we have our game stored in, so again I had mine in RetroArch ROMs, Atari 2600 games, then you could choose a game and it should launch since there's only one Atari 2600 core. I don't really prefer this method personally. What I like to do instead is actually make a playlist. So on the main menu of RetroArch, there is a playlist tab. And if we go into that, we can click on import content, click on manual scan. And now we're going to choose our Atari 2600 games folder as our content directory. So again, mass storage device, RetroArch ROMs, Atari 2600, scan this directory for my case. Now for the system name, make sure content directory is selected. It will name it after the folder you have your game stored in, so if you want them to show up nicely, make sure your folder is named nicely. And then we're going to go down to default core and choose Atari 2600 Stella 2014. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And for the PS2 version of RetroArch, I really don't recommend having things zipped up. It just makes things a lot smoother if you leave them unzipped, so just uh, unzip them. But once you have your options set, go ahead and start the scan. And once the scan's completed, if you back out, you can go back into playlists, and you'll have a nice new Atari 2600 games entry here, and you're able to choose any of the games that you had in your folder. And then to run one, you just go down to it and select it, and then select Run. And there we go, Atari 2600 games up and running on a PlayStation 2. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that the colors are really messed up. If you are unfamiliar with the Atari version of Pac-Man, so the background's supposed to be blue and the walls are supposed to be like an orangish, yellowish color. But instead we got this interesting uh, pink, green, bluish thing going on here, and that is just not accurate. So the workaround for this is to actually go into your RetroArch Quick Menu by holding the Start button on your controller for two seconds. And from here we're going to go down to the Options menu. And we need to change the color depth from 16-bit to 24-bit. And once you have done this, you can just press back. And you need to close out of your content. 
And then you could go right back in. And there we go, the colors are now displaying accurately. So when I go in, you can see that they are blue, orangish, yellowish, and just looking how they're supposed to. Unfortunately, you will also notice that the aspect ratio for Atari 2600 games is a little wrong here. And that's just an unfortunate problem I've had with every core in the PS2 build of Retroarch. There's nothing I have been able to do to get this to work in my setup. Now I employ a GBSC, it's outputting it at 1080p, and no matter what I do it doesn't seem to change this output resolution for RetroArch, so unfortunately it's just something I'm stuck with, and I have to use my display to stretch everything out to the proper, uh, proper levels. If you're playing directly on a CRT this might not be the case, I just don't know because I run through the GBSC. But outside of the aspect ratio, after we fix the colors, things are looking really good when it comes to Atari 2600 emulation. Games are running great, and audio is sounding wonderfully Atari. But let's talk about controls here for a second when it comes to Atari 2600 emulation because there were a lot of switches on physical Atari systems back in the day. So first up, to start a game, you press the start button and that will start the game with your selected levels and difficulties. To choose levels, you press the select button and that'll toggle the different game modes that were available within each Atari 2600 game, and again you press start to run it. Now for additional controls, we have the D-pad acting as our control stick, cross and square are our fire buttons, and then our shoulder buttons are to choose difficulty levels between A and B, and that's for player one and player two. And then clicking down on the thumbstick will change between black and white and color, so just an example of those real quick here. We click on the thumbsticks. They're actually not doing anything, so never mind. But that's what they're supposed to do. Awesome. And then lastly, for Atari 2600 games that used a paddle-style controller that is mapped to the left analog stick. But that covers basic setup and play of Atari 2600 games on the PS2 version of RetroArch. So for those of you looking to get Atari 2600 up and running, that is the process. Make sure you get that color depth changed and familiarize yourself with the controls for changing difficulties and stuff, and you are pretty much good to go. But now let's go ahead and cover the few core options that are available to us within Stella 2014. Not a whole lot here, so it shouldn't take too long. But going back into our RetroArt Quick Menu, go back down to the Options tab. The first option was again Color Depth. Make sure that's set to 24-bit or your games are going to look ugly. Our next option is Inner Frame Blending, and this is to kind of mimic the look of what Atari 2600 games looked like on old, old CRTs back in the day. I'm a fan of 65% myself, so it looks sort of like this. And it just gives you that little analog ghosting type thing that was going on back on the systems in the day. And I, I don't know, I think it looks nice, especially when you pair it up with um, a higher end CRT. It looks really nice there too. So I don't know, mess around with it, see which one you like. Next, we have a low-pass audio filter that tries to mimic more accurately the sound that would come out of an Atari 2600. I like to turn this on. It sounds a little bit more accurate to me, so I like it. And then you could change the percentage of that filter level up to 95% or down to 5%. Next are paddle sensitivities. So if you have games that need paddle, you can adjust the sensitivity here. You can adjust the response and the dead zone as you see fit. So if the games are running a little too... Uh, Sensitive, you can adjust that all here. But that's going to cover all the core options within Stella 2014. Again, not a whole lot to mess around with here. you got inner frame, audio, filters, and then sensitivities. And again, just make sure you set that color depth to 24-bit or you're just going to be sad about the way your games look. But anyways, once you have options set the way you want, make sure you save them as a core override so that way every time you load up an Atari 2600 game, these are the options that are going to greet you. But that's really going to do it for Atari 2600 emulation on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Again, very quick and simple to get set up. One option that needs to be changed to make the colors work. And then you're ready to just dive in and start playing. And man, I love Atari 2600. It's such a great system. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. And I will do my best to try to help you out. But now, if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like, dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. 
as well as other reviews, random nonsense, and other things I like to put up. Goes a long way to help keep the place running, and we are just so grateful to all of you for that. We're so close to hitting all of our goals, and we have all of you to thank for that, so thank you so much. If you'd like to further help support the channel and keep it running, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place going. And just another giant shout out to all of our backers, old and new, who have come in and helped keep this place going. Thank you all so very much. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.